All right, guys, today I'm feeling a little bit extra spicy. So today we're going to talk about why your EDC knife probably sucks. Also, too, I've been getting a lot of comments here of late saying that, like, I use a voice changer for, like, my, my deep voice or some people don't like it. But honestly, like, this is my natural voice. So for those who don't like it, I guess you'll just have to move on because I think a good majority of my people that follow me not only come for the knives but they come for the voice so you know what if you don't like it you don't like it but this is not like some voice changer i don't like try to artificially like deepen it or anything like that so this is just my natural voice um i find it pretty funny when people are like oh he's using a voice changer and it was completely unrelated to the topic of this video but i just find it really funny because so many people are like what voice changer do you use and it's like actually this is just my the pitch of my voice so if you don't like it you don't like it but now let's talk about why your edc knife sucks <laughs> so to be honest i think for the most part a lot of people's edc knives are probably perfect for them and i think that like for the most part we end up you know overthinking and overshooting our knives like um you know something like this m on is really cool but do you really need something like this i will say i don't know to me as when you become like a collector when you really get into knives i say yes because like uh, one of the biggest things i will say when it comes down to a knife like this um especially Chris Reeves, and I've talked about this in other videos, but one of the coolest things about them is just the attention to detail, the thoughtfulness, and really just like when you assemble slash disassemble something like an Omnimzon, an Inkosi, a Sebenza, um, you really learn very quickly how tight the tolerances are and how well crafted these knives are. Like when it comes to like putting in like the barrel spacers and stuff like that, like you have to fit them perfectly. They will not go unless everything is absolutely perfect. So the tolerances are very, very tight on these knives. And that is something that I think a lot of cheaper knives and people who only ever experience you know like let's say 250 300 and less knives get that experience and it's unfortunate even chinese knives cannot match like the level of precision that these more expensive knives do now to be fair not every 500 600 700 dollar knife is built to the level of precision that chris reeve uh, or chris reeve knives as a whole are but it is definitely something that you will miss out on if you don't go to more expensive knives now, to be honest, when it comes down to it, I think about the only knives genuinely that suck when it comes to, you know, carrying something in your pocket for cutting things is things that have a high propensity to break down or degrade. I think oftentimes when we talk about cheaper or more value driven knives, it's really more a push of like with once again, Chris Reeve knives, especially, but others, these knives tend to break in. Whereas other knives like cheaper knives and such, they tend to get less and less, uh, like they just basically break, right? So like they start off really nice. They start off with a smooth, you know, maybe polished action or feel, but when you use things like Teflon washers and stuff, Teflon is a material that once again is plastic. And if you look at something like this um, Kershaw Emerson CQC6, this does use uh, Teflon washers. And while now it you know flicks great and it does just fine, the problem is that Teflon is sandwiched in between what? two pieces of steel, right? Your blade steel and the handle material or the liner uh, on this one are all made out of steel. So what that means is that softer material, that Teflon is only going to degrade. So it's only going to get worse and worse as you use it. So these knives tend to legitimately break, whereas a more expensive knife like a Chris Reeve tends to break in. So initially a Chris Reeve will start off with a hard action that is not that nice, but it gets better and better and of course um, other things that are really nice about Chris Reeves is you'll notice um, and others too that are more premium like this is that even though they just use um, in rather thin phosphorus bronze washers they have little holes cut into the washers themselves to retain things like fluorinated grease um, or other different types of lubricants that you can put in your you know like action to make it smooth so it's going to retain that and that's how you end up with something like my Sebenza that has almost a very what people would call hydraulic type action or pivot it's because that pivot is literally trapping in um, I use KPL or knife pivot lube but it's trapping in that KPL and keeping it there for longer so it's not just uh, you know 
running down the blade and getting wiped off and cleaned off and you know you lose a lot of that um, pivot loop in that process so these are much better or these knives are much better at retaining that type of um, lubricant and that's not just once again when it comes down to um, Chris Reeve, though Chris Reeve does have a lot of these very nice features, so it's convenient to talk about them, but also it is something that you'll see with something like this Spartan Harzy folder by Spartan by Spartan Blades, if I can stop tripping over my words, which once again has a very, very hydraulic lock. So you guys can see, or I should say action, not lock. Um, so anyways, when it comes down to it, what really makes a knife not worth it is, you know, knives that really break instead of break in. And then lastly is if the value equation isn't there. And a lot of people, this is where things get more arbitrary or maybe, you know, like arguable is what is the value equation for a knife and so for me what I look at is one you know I do think country of origin does play some role in this personally because at the end of the day you know everything that you own that isn't just like a straight razor like a little box uh, I should say like a little box cutter you know box opener type of thing is potentially you know what one could argue potentially a little bit excessive right so all of that has to everything has to come down to second kind of cool factor. So for me, you know, country of origin is important because I like to be able to take pride in where my knives come from, right? And I like to support people who are enthusiasts of the, the kind of craftsmanship or trade that this is. Like, you know, I like someone who takes pride in being able to make a quality product such as a knife. Right, so aside from that, you know, that is one thing that at least plays a factor for me. I know some people, especially those who love their Civivis and Wii's and stuff, they don't really care about this, but I do like at the end of the day, kind of knowing that, you know, the people that make the majority of my knives love making knives, like that is their passion. And I'm not just talking about the designers and the companies, like, the you know owners and people who run we knives are passionate about knives right but the individual makers of those knives could probably care less right so that's where you know having knives that come from places like america like chris reeve like spartan blades you know these are people who genuinely love making knives anyways that kind of soapbox aside it is also important to factor in the materials and so as many come or as many YouTubers will say, you know, things like D2 are not bad blade steels, right? You know, there are many good blade steels, but at the same time too, things like K390, as you see with this blade on this Delica 4, are leaps and bounds better. Like, don't get me wrong, D2 is good, but K390 does hold an edge a lot longer, right? So it's like you should come to really wanting, you know, the best you can reasonably get. Once again, that's part of that value equation. Do steels matter? Certainly. They do matter and I'm not the largest steel knob I will say many of my blades I would say one of the most prominent steels in my you know collection is S30V and I think it's a good general purpose steel however it is worth noting you know that if you can get better steels you should aim for it you know especially you know if they're expecting you to pay a lot of money so aside from country origin and materials. Those are two very big factors in the value equation, but also to, um, once again, second kind of cool factor, how a knife makes you feel or like how that knife feels at hand. Does it work for you well? Ergonomics are a huge point. Um, ergonomics are a huge point and also i would say really rounding it off lastly is weight now for me weight is probably one of the least crucial factors but uh, you know within reason you don't want to necessarily carry around a huge brick and usually for me how i kind of usually just keep weight as a non-issue is by size. Usually I will not carry knives that have blade lengths over three and a half inches, at least for EDC, of course. For wilderness tasks, this is different, but um, usually I, I prefer to stick around three and a half and under. And what I found for the most part, of course, there are some outliers to this, but for the most part, most of the blades that are three and a half inches long or less are going to generally be pretty lightweight. So that's kind of how I keep my weight in check, um, at least for knives. Um, 
but there are definitely plenty of good knives that do exceed the weight and size limits that I have said or set and things like that are like the Spartan Harzy folder. Great example of a bigger knife that really is honestly pretty pocket friendly. Another one would be the Heretic Knives Manticore X, very pocket friendly and it definitely is a bigger blade, right? I mean, the actual cutting blade itself or the cutting edge isn't too, too bad, but the actual like handle length is definitely roomy per se. But anyways, these are some of the deline delineating factors for me that make pocket knives not suck. And you will end up finding, I think, in most kind of uh, walks of life that I think a lot of people end up drifting towards higher end knives just for these factors. In addition to, I think there is definitely a natural attraction, at least for, I'll say for guys, I'm not 100% sure about girls because I know their minds are kind of wired differently, but I know another huge factor in what really pushed me towards more higher end knives was just the kind of mechanical features of them. And that is that, you know, like, once again, there's a lot of frame locks out there. The earlier shown Kershaw Emerson CQC6 in D2 is a budget frame lock, but when you look at higher end knives, the execution and the overall machining of these knives is just more well thought out. I mean, you have like every little detail just thought of. I mean, I think one that is that comes to my mind immediately that's a good example of this is the McNeese Mac 2, where, you know, on first thought, you you think this is a kind of chunky titanium folding knife, right? But on the inside, um, there's actually on both the lock lock bar side and on the non lock bar side or just handle it has been essentially swiss cheese um, on the inside internally to lighten it up so these are extra attentions to detail and and another one of those would be the thumb studs are made out of titanium right not the to say that like McNeese is the first to do this but there's a lot of little things that are just attention to detail kind of factors that make the knife um just nice for those who have that attention to detail. So I think for me, like from a mechanics standpoint or like just looking at things from a mechanical standpoint and looking how they work, how they function, it's just very cool to see these nice minor little touches. And it ends up being that these, you know, touches of refinement and s such like make the knife not only perform a little bit better, but that's what ends up being the more expensive part. I mean, of course, materials do lend a hand in that, but also to really the careful thoughtfulness of these blades is what makes them really a little bit more expensive or sometimes a bit more expensive. Uh, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And to be honest, so long as a knife in your pocket isn't a Benchmade, it's probably pretty good. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.